Bienvenidos a Disrupt Everything, podcast series by Isla García. Reinventate a ti mismo y cambia lo que más te importa. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everyone. This is a new episode of Disrupt Everything podcast series. And today, you guess it. Um, as I'm talking in English, we, it means that we have an international guest. We have another interview, a new episode with a new, this time, really, really, really special guest. Today, as every episode here in Disrupt Everything, we try to deconstruct uh, top world performers, uh, high class innovators, disruptors, genius masters uh, people that is uh, is trying to work out like different methods experimental methods and it's been it's been trying to disrupt the status quo and work on um high capacities and trying to to add some value to the to the human being T today i i have with me uh, as i said a really special guest uh, today i have uh, with me a uh, Alexander Tanus. Alexander, thank you and good mm, no, good morning for you and well, good noon for you or evening. <laughs> good afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon. And yeah. thank you for for being in the podcast. Thank you for for having this time for 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 this interview. Thank, thank you very much, Israel. Pleasure to be on it. Uh, for for us is a is a real it's a special pleasure, a real pleasure. So. People can can know about your work, can know about you what you're doing, about the 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 value you are adding to the to the to the humankind, because um, you, your work is being deep for for a long time. Let, let me let me give you all, uh, all of you listeners a bit of a yeah a bit, a bit of much of what uh, Alexander Chanus is and is in about. He's uh, Alexander Alexander Chanus is musician. Educator, composer, and ethnomusicologist. He has a bachelor of uh, music with a double major in music theory and composition, and a master of arts degree in music education uh, for Columbia University Teachers College. He's a recipient of Mellon Fellowship and also earned a master of arts and master of philosophy degrees from Columbia University in uh, ethnomusicology where he has also enrolled in a PhD program. Uh, Alexander has taught in various music courses at the same institution. Um, uh, let me tell you that the works of Alexander are frequently performed in the United States, Europe, Asia. Alexander also has a really a great uh, uh, side as, as a musician. He has performed for a vari variety of musical styles, including classical, jazz, rock, non-Western music on various instruments. Alexander is also um, he has all conducted field work for 17, 17 years in over 40 countries around the world. Uh, his eth ethnomusicological research investigates issues of, of accult acculturation, community, musical identity, in, and also the, the concept of talent, charisma, and leadership in music. Uh, for, the, for the past 13 years, he's been researching the therapeutic and esoteric properties on sound from three different perspectives and this is really interesting western scientific eastern philosophical and shamanic societal, societal beliefs all, all for gaining a deeper understanding of how and what to extent sound has been used to affect human consciousness um, the, mater the material he transmits about sound is based through a research over many years how many his observation made, made during the, his field work, scientific studies, personal experience, and data collected from thousands of people he has worked with uh, sound therapy has led him to a deeper understanding of sounds, of how sounds reveal and unlocks hidden powers we have within us to promote profound inner changes and healing. Inspired by his findings, his findings, and this is what maybe connect me with him thanks to uh, I could be in one of these sessions. He designed a protocol of an integrated experience he called, and he, it calls, sound meditation. Um, Alexander, 
what a yes. what a curriculum because also you are a frequent guest lecturer in major institutions such as Georgetown University, Princeton University, Columbia University, and in NYU and muse museums such as American Museum, Natural History, a Metropolitan Museum of New York, Brooklyn Museum, the Ruby Museum, and the Museum and the Museum of the City of New York, and you still continue doing you do you doing your research on sound and some therapist and teaches your practice all over the world what an intense life yeah Alexander. <laughs> it is it's my life's work uh i mean it seems you lived like 100 years <laughs> yeah well i'm a professional student <laughs> <laughs> how did Alexander, when when I when I read you about your work, when I find you through through thanks to Eric and Valentino, I, the first question I it came to my mind is, how did all started? What was the beginning? Ah, uh, well, um, my love to music and music learning um, <clears throat> that opened so many doors for me, and. Uh, coincided with other things that I became interested in. Meditation is one. Um, being interested in metaphysics and supernatural and consciousness, Eastern philosophies, ancient knowledge. Yeah. One thing led to another. And Alexander, um, for, for you, That uh, I mean, once you read your your curricula, you you understand that you are a man of science, you are a man of philosophy, and you are also a man uh, about your work about shamanic society, shamanic culture, and also, as you said, ethnomusicology. Um, what what's been the or, or yeah, what's been the the, the aha? the eureka or the aha moments since you started in the in, since you started gaining interest on this field that you started to study learning applying growing le learning improving what's been the, the, the eureka moments for for interacting and also integrating all this in what you're doing right now well there have been many eureka moments um uh, mostly connected to how sound and music impact people, how sound and music affect consciousness, and how much consciousness depends on um, the harmony in natural sound. Um, what we call harmony is a concept that comes from mathematics, mathematical ratios. And um, All of this is exemplified in the power of the harmonic series, which allows us to understand the complexity of sound, the blueprint of sound. And this is from which all harmonies, all harmonic musical cultures come from, all inspirations, all modes and scales. So it's a, it's a very deep, subject that can be discussed over many hours yeah yep. <laughs> <laughs> i was pr I, i was there for almost seven hours uh, while you were talking about this topic har harmonies sound yeah and, there's so much connected to sound and and what's the connection i mean you've been you've been you've been dedicating all your life to the study and and, and understanding of and what's the what's the connection between sound And you, you used a word uh, before, consciousness, and and how we can, what's the connection between both of both both of them, and how we can alter consciousness through sound in a in a positive way, of course. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know exactly what the connection is between the two of them, but it's for sure. Um, There is a connection, there is, um, well, let me explain it this way, there's, there's so much to talk about this issue here and I 
I'm hesitating going into something very deep that would get me talk about it for the entire length of the session, which we don't <laughs> want to do that. But um, basically, harmony, when we experience sound, when we experience combination of different notes to a level where they make a scale or a mode, when you play a composition that's composed on major scale or minor scale or other modes used in other musical cultures. We call ragas like in Indian ragas and the Arabic makamat, plural of makam. These ancient modes have different mathematical ratios. When we listen to compositions composed on these modes, they move our emotions. They evoke emotions within us. They create feelings and thoughts and imagery. If the person is focused, attentive, listening judiciously, attentively, and not just hearing it in the background, but even if hearing it in the background can still affect the person, but to affect more attentively and, and effectively, one has to dedicate their attention. When this happens, um, we learn about something new. We create an experience, or the sound, music creates an experience for us that makes us learn about who we are, makes us learn about something new. It reveals something to us. Sometimes we may describe it as feeling uplifted, feeling healing, therapy, nurturing, revitalization, so on and so forth. People feel so many different things when they listen to music. Music can make people dance. How is this happening? Through something called entrainment. Okay. Entrainment is, yeah, entrainment is <clears throat> something that happens to the brain, but the entire body as well. When, let's say, if we're listening to music as we're talking, little by little, at some point, we're going to start tapping our feet, moving our body in sync with the music or nodding the head. Anyway, showing sympathetic resonance, showing that we are being affected by something. How does that happen? Well, it's the physics of sound, acoustics. All the parameters affect the human body, the brain, the heart, the autonomic nervous system, the, the, the vagus nerve, the heart rate variability, the subtle energy in the body. And that's not something we know so much about. There's a lot, lot to know about, but it's very, very complex. And um, would you say that uh, with the uh, with with sound we can? Because um, I had the I had the pleasure of and also the privilege of being in one of your uh, sessions and uh, or like uh, the, the, the experiences. I would say more than a session. I mean, it's a complete and overwhelming and healing and learning and improving experience mm -hmm. from human point of view, from a professional point of view, from, I mean, it's holistic, I would say. So, how we, how you, I mean, I feel, and I, I wasn't, I was, I wasn't the only one. I felt healed. I felt uh, energized. I felt like, you know, recharged. I mean, how we can, how we can connect with ourselves and heal through sound and music. I mean, the, the thing you made possible that, that day in Ibiza in July when we were doing the experience, the sound meditation, we will talk about it. How, how this is possible? I mean, this the, the sense of healing, the sense of, you know, being the, the same, everything aligned, connected, real, like the experience like you never experienced before. I mean, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, <clears throat> uh, there are a lot of things to discover. We need to put the right uh, intention and uh, hard work to discover big things. Um, that's why I said earlier, it's my life's work. It's based on understanding of so many things. In a way, anyone can do what I did, but they just need to put the effort, the time, the love, the caring into achieving that. And that allows us to discover most important things. 
Uh, that's how it always works. So basically, how does it work? Well, it's um, it's knowing a variety of different things and understanding what music is really about and where the power of music comes from. In this case, it comes from sound. The blueprint of sound is <clears throat> the harmonic series. Maybe we can talk about it later. Yes. And um, what these frequencies that are found in the instruments that I use, and these frequencies can be called harmonics, either harmonics or overtones. Uh, the reason why they're powerful is because of the relationship between one frequency and the other and the other and all others, because it's basically mathematical ratios that we are experiencing through our ears and body as well. The body perceives vibration. What they cause is huge impact on the brain and the heart and all other organs. Um, if you understand the physics of sound, if you understand how consciousness works, what seem to be um, what seem to be the most important things to use when exploring consciousness, uh, which are the two things that create a shamanism, um, and these this would be song music or sound and plants or compounds, chemicals, and uh, with the, with very good attention. So if you want to work with music, you want to use the same principle, the attention of the person. You want to promote the right context to approach such an experience. And I, as you remember, shared with people what the best way is to receive the experience, what to do in it, eyes closed, lying down or seated upright, wearing a mask or diminishing the amount of uh, stimuli entering the brain to focus only on the sound and to use one's mindset correctly to navigate in the experience. And the mindset is intentions, attention, will, awareness, and curiosity, which creates the, the openness. And to learn how to navigate in the experience with one's meditative state, contemplative or mindful state. So these three things are important. Meditation, contemplation or introspection, and mindfulness and uh, how to feel and understand the sound. I shared with you certain concepts <clears throat> um, on how sound evokes emotions. If you remember that part, called it yeah. ethos and pathos, and how to listen to overtones, what overtones are, and all of these things. So it's an experience where the person has to do work and not just to go along with things. And for the individuals to do the work correctly, I would have to share a lot with them, share with them what I know or a bit of what I know that's pertinent and important experience so that they are investing their time and energy and inner resources as well in contributing to having a powerful experience, which can be labeled as healing, self-empowering, therapeutic, nurturing, educative, rehabilitative, revealing. This is about alchemy at the end. Would you say, would you say that um, that working on the overtones and working on uh, like mindfulness, working on, as you said, observing, being the observer, and also in meditation will, will, will help us to get uh, this higher state of, you know, consciousness, f healing, and also understanding that how sounds can impact in our in our mind and our no yeah. our mind also our feelings everything in our body absolutely yes they they can do this <clears throat> but we need to put the work into it so how does sound do this by quieting the noise that is in our brain and everywhere and shifting the noise or the 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 static, uh, shifting it back to pure signal. This thing that reducing the noise to signal ratio is so important to understand. And I don't mean to be a reductionist here, 
but sound does it in a very unique way. It unlocks capacities within us that we didn't know that they were there. We just need to work with it to be able to still the mind from all of the noise and all of these thoughts. That's why meditation is a helpful thing to any person. So there are a lot of capacities within us, but when we are full of noise and we are distracted and we lose attention, we lose awareness of what's within us. So sound with the hard work that we put into it can allow us to achieve a variety of different things. Yeah, it's a fine tuning. Mm -hmm. It's a fine tuning of the self-awareness through self-observation, enhancing self-observation. So yeah, working, the, this is why when, when you are on a deep uh, meditation state and you add sound, you get so deep. Uh, I've, 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 I've I had the pleasure of uh, experience, like, well, apart from the experience we did with you, which was wild, as maybe four or five times I've been on a deeper and really deeper state of meditation and with sound I could even go more deep like and switch like almost disconnecting my mind mm -hmm. yeah and Alexander um, you were talking about the harmonic sounds and overtones could you guys give us a glimpse of what what this is about and what is it sure. what is it, why this is important Mm -hmm. Yes, certainly. Uh, Thank you. I will uh, <laughs> do, do my best to tell you most important things uh, about harmonics in staying with as little time as possible. It's something <laughs> no, that one can talk no. about for many days. I know, I know. <laughs> so uh, this is um, the harmonic series is considered by many to be the most sophisticated manifestation of intelligence in the universe and uh, humans use mathematics to understand the complexity of uh, the intelligence in the universe and nature and us um, and uh, this doesn't mean that the universe is made out of mathematics. We use mathematics to understand what's there. What is there is in var various states of, uh, it's in form of uh, systems, patterns, fields and phenomena. And that's how we experience reality. So it's important for us to understand these mathematical systems especially things like fractal geometry. If the listeners don't know what these are, they, they, they would be good for them to look them up because it's hard to uh, talk about them in words. They need to see examples. So fractal geometry, Fibonacci series, uh, the, the, the importance of phi or the golden mean, the golden ratio. So the harmonic series is the most important one, is the most sacred. And that has been connected to the concept of God. God as the creator of the universe, the, or the universe itself, who knows? I mean, who knows the nature of God? But quite often in holy books, uh, you often come to, you know, big revelation that sound is God, uh, like in the Gospel of John, the first sentence, in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. A word here is, uh, is a translation of the Logos, because the Bible came to Europe, it was in ancient Greek, and Logos is God. What is the Logos? Logos in ancient Greek means ratio. It means um, uh, Portion, proportion. <clears throat> so these words are connected to mathematics. So the primordial Om created the universe in Hinduism and Buddhism. Or the, the, the universe was sung into being. That's what ancient Egyptians believed. So 
everywhere you go, there are always people talking about sound as the creator of the universe, sound as God, sound the creator of reality. And let's not also forget how powerful words are. Words contribute to the way we experience reality and, and sometimes create reality or modify reality. So, um, and in Genesis, for example, we know that, you know, there's that passage. On the first day, God said, let there be light. On the second day, God said all of this, you know, paraphrasing in a comical mm -hmm. way here. But uh, basically, all of these things are telling us something about uh, sound and language. I don't anymore understand Genesis as God created the universe in six days and rested on the seventh day. There's a lot of encoding here. It seems to be more you become God if you know how to create with your language. Language, sound, creates reality. If people look up what cymatics are, C-Y-M-A-T-I-C-S, how sound moves matter, uh, in the correlation between cymatic patterns with um, patterns in nature, whether tortoise, tor tortoise shell or leopard's patterns, zebra patterns, uh, mandalas, and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> I'm giving this background here as a setup to create a context of what has been going on and the gravity of what has been going on, all of these things are connected to sound. And if you are interested in sound, you will quickly get to the harmonic series because the harmonic series is what creates sound. Here's an example. Every sound that we hear has kind of two components, if you will. One is the fundamental frequency, which is the most pronounced part of the sound. And that's the part that we experience almost all the time. When we listen to a note played on a violin or played on a guitar or on a piano, that note is not just one note. It seems to be for us as one note, but it's more than one note. It's mostly one note. Mm -hmm. That fundamental frequency is, let's say, is, is 98 or 99 percent of the sound or less and the rest of that the one percent or the two percent is variety of different frequencies select number of them and these frequencies may be weaker or stronger than others in terms of amplitude how soft or loud they are and their role is to give us the tone color, the timbre, timbre in, in Spanish. Yeah. So the tone color gives a lot of information on what we're listening to. If we're listening to a note uh, and that note is played on a violin and we happen to know what a violin is, we would recognize it right away that it's a note played on a violin and not a flute and not a guitar or cello. So same register notes can have different tone colors because of the harmonics that are found in them. In any sound in nature, and my voice is different sounding than your voice because I have different harmonics. What makes my voice has different harmonics? The entire shape of the buccal cavity and the entire area between my vocal cords and my throat up to my lips, everything in the mouth, in, in my mouth, that would, in that area is called the buccal cavity, where sound resonates and is amplified. So how small or large or thick my vocal cords are, how wide or narrow my throat is, how big or soft my soft palate is and the uvula everything that creates tone color so and that's how my voice has a different timbre than yours now 
these frequencies are there, we can analyze them, experience them and study them using technology, specific software. Uh, I can name a couple of them if you want to check this further. Isotop RX is one and uh, another one is Adobe um, Audition. Okay, I'll there put are it on the notes, Adobe uh -huh. Audition. Yeah, thank you. And uh, Isotop RX Rx is the better one. Anyway, so um, these things allow us to study these harmonics, but we can also hear them when we play gongs, singing bowls, didgeridoos, discs, bells, and various instruments made from metal or also made from plant material. It's easier to hear them on metallic instruments but of course it's harder to make an instrument from metal you need to combine elements together to create a resonant instrument it's not easy to and you need to hammer it there's a lot of work involved so we don't know what drove humans to create these instruments combining different metals together to create alloy for example uh bronze is a often used the alloy to create these instruments, which is a combination of copper and tin of specific proportions. So when we make a singing bowl or a gong f from bronze, when we play it, we start to hear the overtones. We hear them on a clearly, to a clearly audible level. They're no longer concealed within and under the fundamental frequency under the blanket of the fundamental frequency. So we can hear them to clearly audible level. And when we hear them, something happens to us. We feel so many amazing things. We feel quiet, we feel present, attentive. We feel um, more at peace. We feel more attentive, fine-tuned, aware, uh, it clears stress away. It does wide variety of different things. What gives this its power is the mathematical ratio that these harmonics have a very unique relationship between them. And this relationship is a very sophisticated, uh, infinite series of mathematical ratios. And this seems where the concept of God comes from. And this seems what creates the word. We don't know exactly how, but it sure can allow a person to be busy researching and totally fascinated of for, an entire li for an entire lifetime doing <laughs> this research. Of, of course, I mean, as been as the, the journey you just created has been fascinating. By the way, in just like five, six, seven minutes, that is been going on this question. And, and uh, Alexander, uh, this this leads you to. I'm amazed by your research about the, the and, and also I mean the, the the last part of the research that goes through through yeah through the through the sound meditation method or experience and how we how we can. Uh, I mean, what 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 have you discovered? Uh, because. I, I was in one of the, your sessions in July in Ibiza, and uh, and how what what have you discovered of doing the, these experiences of the sun meditation all over the world? I mean, in with different people with different backgrounds. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a what 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 have you discovered in so many workshops and with so many people? Uh discovered a lot of things. I, was I the, was, yeah, was the, 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 com, the commonalities or the, the things that are, yeah. that are popping the most? Uh -huh. um, there's, there's a lot. I mean, I always learn new things and common between people. And that's why I'm very fascinated by all of this and left uh, what I used to do, which I loved. I used to be composer, musician conductor, ethnomusicologist, I studied different things in music over 12 years, um, doing four degrees. Uh, so um, there's a, this is, you know, if you're coming from that background, 
obviously you have deep interest and love to music and the as you know any rich subject the more you know about it the more you love it the more you're fascinated the more you want to learn further so it was one of these things that i kept on asking questions kept on learning and uh, things led me to deal with this where the learning continues and it's uh, magnified what i learned from various people is that we all react to sound in a universal way that means we are uh, encoded with a capacity uh, readiness to benefit from sound very deeply and in a wide variety of complex ways and all of these are shared by so many people. I've worked so far on over with over 17,000 people uh, in various group numbers, settings, and backgrounds. And people's reaction to this experience, sound meditation, which is I I didn't create it. I I uh, packaged it in a different way than others based on my experience and understanding research and so many things what I added to the sound what I basically sound meditation is not a term that I created or coined it's been used to describe what some people call sound healing sound bath vibrational healing and there are so many different terms to the same thing Nothing is standardized. Uh, <clears throat> the, the two most common terms, especially nowadays, are sound healing and sound bath. Mm -hmm. I'm not in favor of these terms because they're gimmicky. They're ridiculous. They promise so much. Um, they, don't, they don't address what the individual needs to do. They sell a different reality. They don't encompass a lot of meaning in the title to inform the person on what the experience is about and how to have it. Sound bath means that I go somewhere and I bathe in sound, but it's not bringing awareness to where where is my mind, what my role is, how much of active participation. Sound healing also may suggest, well, the sound's going to heal me or the person uh, facilitating is gonna heal me which people do call themselves sound healers these are not healers they facilitate healing that's something else healers facilitate healing create conditions for healing which is a very important thing very there may be some few people who heal others with supernatural capacity but they're very 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 rare to find so uh, sound meditation is appropriate because uh, it's a bringing awareness to what I need to do. Well, I'm going to meditate. That is telling a lot already. That means I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to be present. I'm going to have to meditate as I'm using sound. And the person facilitating uh, has a responsibility to tell people how to receive it, what to listen for, because it's about creating context. Not everyone knows what to do. People listen in a wide variety of different ways and hear in a variety of different ways. So it's important to be attentive. And uh, what I learned from people are more things about what I want to understand about consciousness, um, about how important the experience is for us and how much we're encoded to work with sound. And this is something that we wouldn't learn about and, and witness even to the tiniest structures in our body, the microtubules. These are small structures, conveyor belt-like structures um, that are very important to what goes on inside cells and that they vibrate sympathetically with sound, with this harmony. So it's very important to uh, learn about them because we don't have the science and the technology to learn about them through people's experiences. That's very important data. It's experiential data. And, and also, as you said, uh, most of this data and also the, the practice, uh, the sound is, the, is maybe the, the creates the context, but you, you need to meditate. I mean, it's, you, you need to, to pay attention, right? Because at yes. the end, uh, as you said, everyone listens music in a variety of, of ways and 
you can understand sound in a really different way if you pay attention to it and if you make a, give all your senses and meditate, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, how, how can we push ourselves to a deep disconnect from the mind, Alexander? Once you know how? all you know, all that you know, that is a lot. Well, it's going to require work. It's always going to require work. But uh, with knowledge, one can uh, can be more efficient in the energy and the time spent. What I noticed to be more effective than anything else that I've tried in meditation is using these harmonics. Meditating with these instruments, preferably preferably uh, using them acoustically and not via recordings. Although a recording would work better than other instruments, but not as good as when you are present in person with that instrument in the same room. Whether you're playing a gong uh, or someone is playing gong for you or singing bow or didgeridoos or discs and bells and <clears throat> everything else. So why when we dedicate our awareness to the sound we are shifting the spotlight of our consciousness our attention to the sound this is reinforced with curiosity so as long as we sustain what we need to sustain to keep the attention there which is what I called earlier the mindset intention attention will awareness and curiosity to focus on the phenomenological aspect of the experience. Phenomenology is when we address the mechanics of the experience, the mechanics of self-awareness. So as we're giving the sound of the gong or singing bowl our attention, the sound is working on us. So the hearing, listening, our hearing sense is the most sophisticated port almost like a computer port like firewire and usb it allows the person to be affected by the sound and the quality of the sound is very important here and different sounds can do different things and some sounds can be bad for us as well that's another topic all by itself so um, one can be affected on the deepest level emotionally, mentally, physically, energetically, and spiritually. This is what the Sufis did everywhere in the world. A Sufi is someone who has such a practice, who joins a group where they alter their consciousness with sound and music and sometimes accompanied by bodily movement or dancing, whirling. So it's understanding how to listen. That's how we can disconnect from the mind understanding that meditation is important for a reason because there's so much noise and distraction in our life. It is. Electromagnetics wreaking havoc on our senses and our consciousness. So it's very important to do this maintenance to lower the RPM of the thinking mind to clear out the noise. And this has to be involving the person in active participation and knowledge how to use tools correctly and i'm, I'm talking about tools and um, which one which tools uh, do you recommend us for the people and the listeners that are uh, that you know like me like inexperts and people yeah. who is uh, starting on on trying to get on our harmonics and some meditation, what what tools would you recommend us for starting in a really beginners, a newbie way? I would say, if we put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, there are various ways um, to involve yourself in meditation mm -hmm. um, in various ways, either reading about it um, or checking out YouTube various ways to meditate, uh, taking a class, working with a teacher, going to group meditations, learning about sound. Uh, my, my website is a good resource for this. It is uh, indeed. It, and we'll put it on the well, notes. Thanks. Yeah, soundmeditation.com. So um, 
when people start to research sound, they realize that, whoa, there's so much happening on the internet and this attention is increasing tremendously and rapidly. Um, so consciousness is now interested in sound, but the unfortunate thing is that because a lot of, most people don't understand it or don't understand it the right way, uh, they end up by um, addressing the things that are not the most important. So there's a lot of misinformation and disinformation as well to mislead people. Um, for example, um, most people, when they research sound, they come to, oh, the difference between frequencies, A440 hertz versus A432 hertz. While this may be important, 432 being the right one more than 440, it's not as important as something much more important than this to discuss, which is um, equal temperament versus non-equal temperament. And that's something that people can read about on my website. So this is important to know about before uh, learning about what one needs to do, what are the tools, because it's very important to go to the right place to get the right tools and not everywhere on the internet will give people the right tools. Yeah, this is internet is, to such, is so tricky. Yes. So if the person is misinformed or unaware of what to look for, then they can be misled and their energy ends up by misleading them. This is the point of this information is to get people to waste their time and energy and resources. So you can create a different reality like that. So I, uh, I'm a thorough and rigorous researcher. I vet things and select the right things, and that's why I name my website, but it's not the only website, but people have to look for good websites to learn about sound. Uh, working with the uh, recordings of singing bowls, uh, gongs, and all of these instruments, high quality recording, and not just using cheap microphones. Why? Because these frequencies are the absolute hardest thing to record in sound. We can record frequency very easily and all other amplitude and all other parameters of sound. Tone color is the hardest thing. So in, in, on some instruments, we had to use six different microphones and very expensive ones in, in the recordings that I did. I have six albums. If people would like to purchase them, they're not on my website yet. Yeah, they can contact me directly through my website or they can listen to some of my recordings uh, for free, just a few uh, tracks and older tracks actually that they can access through uh, my website, my SoundCloud page. So, um, and people can get other tools by buying a couple of instruments. Mm -hmm. um, you know, these instruments are easy to play. They're hard to play really well, but easy to play. You don't need to spend many years practicing to be able to play well like other instruments. Singing bowl is easy to hit, you know, you need to learn basic, basic stuff, whether it's chimes, singing bowl, gong, and I have a list of instruments that I use uh, in this practice on my We can website. also check it out, yeah, in your website. And, and uh, Alexander, how, um, how would you, you talk about self-awareness and uh, uh, also connecting with a higher self is it is a sound meditation a way uh, uh, to to realign self-awareness and um, on getting to, into higher self how 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 can, how can we how can we realign this how we can get to the higher self and um, the pe people that we are busy we are not paying attention we are living in this uh, fast fast paced yeah. world and and yeah and it it, it, it leads to the self observation what's what's your thoughts yeah so how can we do this by understanding first what are we suffering from and why and how we need to understand the human condition very well and to pay attention to what's going on that's not being addressed or not being addressed the right way. In it's, it's deeper than, Ber than that, right? Pardon? It's deeper than that. Yes, it's a lot deeper than this. 
so Western medical system is sophisticated in one way, but very basic in another and misled. We don't address the causes of why we're suffering from. We address symptoms because that that is good for business. And that's why pharmaceuticals, you know, don't often heal people. Quite often they become addicted to them, especially with people with mental mood disorder or uh, so, or PTSD with traumas and depression and severe anxiety. We don't have very effective medication because we don't really understand very well what's going on because we lost the spiritual aspect. We no longer have that in science. So we need to really bring back spirituality to science to really understand the complexity of the human uh, experience of the of the, the human uh, period, everything mm. of consciousness, to understand what we've been going through, what the brain goes through, what we're going through every day, especially people who live in cities, how unhealthy our life uh, has become and, and our schedules and uh, to to learn how to care for the body, to do the maintenance before the body is very out of tune and the person is suffering from disease, mental or mood disorder. So bef there is a maintenance required. So that is to first and foremost is to deal with stress, to learn to deal with stress and to have a spiritual practice to connect to who we really are, to understand that the most important thing in being in the human experience is to understand why we are in the human experience. Experiencing being alive is important, is good, is fun, but ex trying to understand what is the point of being alive is the most important thing for people. And when they are distracted and misled, they don't address this or they address it very, very little or in the most efficient way, or they join religions that tell them here, we have a book, God said this. Uh, so what humans want to do is to understand who they are, is to follow gnosis. Gnosis is self-knowledge, experiential knowledge. That's what's called Jnana Yoga in Hinduism, the path of knowledge. And when we go deep through spiritual work over many years, not taking shortcuts, um, and also while being very careful in how to do this work without falling into the pitfalls, because there's a lot of negative stuff that people would face. Outcome result of ego inflation, spiritual materialism, spiritual bypassing, narcissistic spirituality, pathological altruism. You know, the ego, the negative side of ego can root itself and grow with the person if they're not doing the work correctly. They can become hypocritical and not be aware of that and not even plan for that. So there's a lot to understand to do this work well. But when we do our work, we go deeper into the self. And in Hinduism specific school, Advaita Vedanta told us that we get to the Atman. The Atman is the absolute self, absolute sense of the self, the distilled notion of the self. And that is one with the ultimate nature of the universe, which is the Brahman. So we are one with the universe. We are consciousness looking at itself, experiencing itself. So it takes the individual's work, investment of their time and energy and resources to achieve these things. And that's what consciousness wants to do. So it's important to understand the right methods to connect to the higher self and fine tune awareness. It's by paying attention, it's by asking questions, it's by um, questioning things, being skeptical, working hard, being diligent, l investing one's energy in fine tunement of the self on the mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual levels. 
Alexander, um, I don't want you, I don't want to, I know you have a short, short period of time for the interview. I'm just going to shoot you like uh, some fire, rapid fire questions, uh, because okay. uh, you've been, you've been uh, enlightening us, me for sure, and also the listeners. Um, what would you say has been, uh, I'm going to shoot you like three, four, five uh, rapid fire questions. Alexander, what, what has been, or what would you say has been your toughest challenge up until now? Uh, my toughest challenge up until now in life? Yes. Um, to fully heal myself. I grew up in war over 14 years in Beirut and uh, suffered so much from PTSD and traumas you know mm -hmm. what was the was the thing you feel most proud of having followed having had the the stamina the steadfastness the courage the vision the inspiration to follow little impulse of something <laughs> i love and that it led me here and i didn't know where i was going <laughs> love it um i i think uh there's a there's a anyway there's a this reminds me of a poem yes please uh, um, well i know that i don't know where i'm going but i know that i'll know when i get there i don't know where i'm at and i don't really care I just know that I'm here and I know that I'm there. And wow. I didn't know that I knew. Thank you. Alexander, was the, thank you for sharing this poem. What's the habit or practice that you cannot lift without every single day? Uh, That's a hard one. There are many. Well, uh, one can say breathing consciously or sound or awareness or being connected to the heart. There are a lot of things. It's hard to single one out. What's, what's the thing uh, that inspired you the most, Alexander? Uh, life. <laughs> the mystery of life and consciousness. And when you think about success in the form, in whatever it is the form, who is the, pers the, the first person that comes to your mind? This is a really good question of a friend, Tim Ferriss. Mm -hmm. um, I've never... I. You know, I've never thought of that. I don't, uh, <clears throat> there are a lot of people who inspire me. I focus more on people who inspire me than than on people who are successful. Yeah, um, for, so because, what's the, the first because person that... Here's, here's why, because, um, because not everyone who's successful is inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and, and uh, depends. I mean, it's all relative, yeah? So, yeah. So who is the person who inspires me the most? Hmm. Well, there are also many. I can't say there's just one. I can name a few. Uh, Rudolf Steiner. Mm. Gurdjieff, Uspensky, Joseph Campbell, Terence McKenna, Krishnamurti. Now, um, Alexander, was the was what will be your recommendation for 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 the people who is uh, because I had an epiphany for you with you and um, I don't know if you remember the talk uh, we were in the sun meditation when. When I approached you, when we finished the next, the day, the day after, and I came to you, I said, because you said something that I never had to say, uh, not in a conference, no one talking about this, um, and it was about the special, I mean, the specialization, about the, you know, focusing in just one thing, like learning just one thing so well that you forget everything else, 
And you say that almost almost the contrary. I mean, yeah, you have to focus and learn over what your passion, but be curious about everything. Try to learn yeah. everything. Try to understand everything. Why it, this world is so focused and it's so built on the idea of you have to be the number one or you have to be so specialized or something. And then what it happens is people lose the, the roots of, of wisdom. I mean, it's just empty people that just know about a topic. What would be your, what would be just, just do a rapid thought on this? I mean, because I was, I had an epiphany. I mean, I changed, I can tell you yes. that from when I so, heard you to now, it changes uh-huh. a lot of things because now so, I, I feel that I know that it, I wasn't, yeah. I, I wasn't wrong as society right. made you believe. Here's what I would say. Um, first and most important step is start to go inward. Try to develop curiosity toward your, who you are. Why are you here? What is the point of being alive? What is it that we need to do? So it's important to become in touch with this, have to quiet the, the noisy mind. So to have a meditation practice, to have some ways to still the mind, to, to start to listen and feel inner things. And once we develop a good connection with the inner bliss, and then this can lead us for self-discovery. And we need to be open to many different things and to go from one thing to another, just be open. And even if one does not have full plan where to go, just start driving the car. You'll know where you need to go. You'll know if you're gonna, if you're going in the wrong way. So one thing would lead to another. Always be open, dedicate time to nurturing and learning and to being connected to what is important for me, what do I'd like to learn about. And this can change and or can grow. Not to be stuck in one thing, being skeptical, asking questions. It's so important to be curious in a creative way and to trust that um, path. But also surround ourselves by people who inspire us. Entrainment, also people who are around us can affect us in a positive or negative way. So it's important to create the right setting and to dedicate time and energy. Always be aware of how I'm investing my time and energy and resources. This is very important because reality is going to be a product of that. Reality is going to be a product of the knowledge that's within me. And when we, it, it's a curse, not a bliss to not know. <laughs> Uh, knowledge is power, but the absence of knowledge is also absence of power. So it takes time and energy, invested time and energy to know. Thank you, Alexander. And final question is just, um, if you have this podcast to reach every every human being in the world, I, I hope so. If, if this podcast and the, this episode could reach every human being, what would be your, what would be your your message love is the most profound and the most important thing (laughs) to experience in the universe Alexander real real love not I'm talking about real love and there are different levels different magnitudes and and uh, yeah any gradation of it is wonderful. <laughs> but what I, what I mean to communicate is that um, uh, love can be, the, this purest form of love can be the most profound thing that any person can experience. And that's something I've experienced. But it's so, so important to, to know this even if one did not have that big experience to always look for it and know that that exists. Alexander Tanus, thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you so much for your for your generosity, for your equanimity, for your genius and for for all the learning and, and the, the teachings you are sharing with us. And thank you for the time. Thank you and with great pleasure.
Um, Alexander, we, where we can find you? Um, soundmeditation.com or on Facebook. Um, so uh, the spelling of my name is A L E X A N D R E. It's Alexandre Tanus, T A N N O U S. That's it. Better, better say than in my rusty English. <laughs> <laughs> thank you Alexander um, um, we will put you in the show notes um, and thank you for, for disrupting and thank you for contributing into the world with your art, genius and your generosity and gift thank you so much thank you, great pleasure good to be with you thanks, bye bye hi everyone um, This is uh, Alexander Tanos. Uh, please, I want to know. I want to know your thoughts. I want to know how did you feel when you listened to this podcast. I want to know your feelings, uh, your thoughts, your impressions, your feedback. What it changed when you hear and uh, sharing Alexander Tanos with us, with us. And um, this is a new form. This is a kind of disrupting yourself. This is a kind of disrupting everything with love, with passion, with sound, with music, with the harmonic sound, with overtones, with sound meditation. Check this out because I can tell you from my own personal experience and a bunch of people have known that Alexander just has touched all over the world that is so impactful, is so insightful and it changes you from inside and this is what really matters to really stand out this is Disrupt Everything Podcast Series I'm your host Isra Garcia and this is an interview with Alexander Tanos thank you Esto ha sido Disrupt Everything by Isra Garcia Encuentra el riesgo antes de que el riesgo te encuentre a ti